Google-only student-produced newscast. We cover stories of interest to MC students and people in the region. We, as a class, cover stories that you need to hear. I'm Mark Sellison. And I'm Molly Chang. In the news today, New details reveal the Toronto van attack may have been caused by the attacker's frustration towards women. The attack killed 10 pedestrians, which were mostly female. This evidence has been connected with the attacker's engagement on community message boards for involuntary celibates. Involuntary celibates, or incels, is a term for many sexually frustrated men. They use these communities to vent their unsatisfactory romantic experiences. These environments have been known to spread warped perspectives of the female gender. They are causing many to question whether resentment towards women is a key motive behind the attack. Detective Sergeant Graham Gibson of the Toronto Police Department has declined to discuss the attacker's motives. He says that all the lanes are open with this investigation. A bit of hope shines through in the wake of the Nashville Waffle House tragedy, as the man responsible for subduing the shooter has been identified. Tennessee University alumni turned national hero James Shaw Jr. has received a lot of well-deserved adulation over the past week. Celebrities have been tweeting him, major news outlets are running stories on him, and there's even been a GoFundMe page started for his daughter's college fund. In the midst of all of this media whirlwind, though, he's managed to stay humble. He insists that he was just a guy trying to survive. No matter the reasoning, we here at MCN Focus send a big salute out to James Shaw Jr. Former President George H.W. Bush has been moved out of intensive care. The former president was originally hospitalized after contracting an infection that spread to his blood. According to a spokesman, he is alert, talking with hospital staff, family, and friends, and his doctors are very pleased with his progress. Mr. Bush is expected to stay in the hospital for a couple more days. The spokesperson says he intends to head over to Maine to spend his summer once he gets out. He was hospitalized a day after his wife, former First Lady Barbara Bush, was laid to rest. Health officials are warning people to throw out any romaine lettuce that they don't know where they're coming from. The CDC is warning people not to eat store-bought romaine lettuce as an E. coli breakout is increasing in this vegetable. The CDC says that in multiple states, 18 cases of E. coli have been reported in the last few days. They also say that romaine lettuce from Yuma, Arizona could be contaminated. Some E. coli symptoms include diarrhea, urinary tract infections, and kidney failure. Some grocery stores and restaurant chains have removed all salad items from their locations altogether. Health officials say that the number of reported illnesses is expected to grow as the outbreak spreads across multiple states. Montgomery County receives a C on its report card for air quality. The American Lung Association gave Montgomery County an A for soot. The county also received a C in the smog category. The ALA stated the ozone pollution overall worsened significantly in America from 2014 to 2016. More than 40 percent of Americans are living in unhealthy levels of soot or smog. Baltimore ranks 17th in the highest air polluted areas. ALA warns lung cancer, heart damage, and reproductive harm are associated with air pollution. The report emphasized the need for the Clean Air Act that some lawmakers want to repeal. In order to re reduce demand on puppy mills in Maryland, the state is in talks to become the second state in the country to ban retail pet stores from selling puppies and kittens. Back in California law, Governor Larry Hogan plans to sign the bill or signed the legislation this week. Pet store owners lobbied to get the bill vetoed, but they were unsuccessful. Store owners say by 2020, which is when the law will take full effect, this will give Marylanders fewer options for finding purebred puppies. It could make individuals turn to the internet where sales are difficult to regulate around the fake websites. Police are looking into a series of vandalism on speed cameras in the DC area. Two cameras were tipped over recently. Police have released a few photos and videos of the suspects in the act. They have yet to be identified by anyone. There have been 11 cases before these two recent events. According to police, there are at least three different individuals involved. They also say there are at least three different vehicles involved as well. 
Police are asking help from the community with any information they have. Coming up next on MC in Focus is our sports update with our expert, Keisha Thompson, and an enlightening package about music. We'll be right back after these student-produced commercials. We have arrived here, not by accident or chance, but by intention delivered. We have traveled here, not by the fog of our fears, but by the clarity of our visions. Step by step, we will climb for our dangling dreams, standing higher than uncertainty. Together, we will fight here, because we are illegal here. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Neil Hodgkinson here, ABJ's Chief Meteorologist. We've got a really nice weekend coming our way, so why don't we take a look at that weekend weather update. We're going to start things off with a pretty gloomy Friday. Friday's coming in at a high of 62 degrees and a low of 49 degrees. There's also going to be a 90% chance of rain, so don't forget to take your umbrella or your raincoat to wherever you're going. Saturday promises to be a little bit more chipper, it's going to be mostly cloudy, but it's gonna be a high of 70 degrees and a low of 39. I think that cool 70 degree weather is gonna be really welcome after that gloomy day. Lastly, we're gonna close things off with Sunday that promises to be mostly sunny with a high of 56 and a low of 38. With the way the last half of the weekend is looking, I think it's finally safe to say that spring is here. That said, I hope everybody has a great weekend, but for now, let's head back to our team in the studio. It's been a big week in sports around the region. Here with the latest is Keisha Thompson. The Capitals are regrouping after losing to the Penguins in game one of the second series. The Caps had a two goal lead in the third period. They were pretty much in a good position to win the game. Then the Penguins scored three straight goals in less than five minutes. They wrapped up with a three to two lead over the Caps. The game two will be held Sunday at the Capital One Arena at 3 p.m. The Washington Nas Nationals broke their four-game losing streak Wednesday night. The Nets had a 15 to lead over the San Francisco Giants. Andrew Stevenson scored two doubles and two runs and four hits. The Nationals will face the Diamondbacks tonight at the National Stadium at 7 p.m. The Wizards lost to the Toronto Raptors in Game 5 Wednesday night. The score was 108-98. Bradley Beal scored 20 points and 3 assists, but it wasn't enough to defeat Toronto. Toronto takes a 3-2 lead in series. Game 6 will be held tonight at the Capital One Arena at 7 p.m. Thanks so much for that sports yeah, update, thanks, Keisha. Keisha. It was if, sports, oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. if sports is a true thing, you'll have an appreciation for this upcoming package, like music. Oh, I like music. Music's great. Music is so much more than just enjoying a good song. If you play an instrument and want to refine your skills, why not look into Montgomery College's well-known music program? The courses that we have for students who just have an interest in maybe learning how to sing, there's class voice, people who are interested in learning how to play the piano, there are two levels of introductory class piano. Those are all entry-level courses for students who are not majors. But what if you're not an entry-level student? What if you've been playing your instrument for years and you really are serious about majoring in music? All students have to audition for our program and also take the theory placement examination to be a part of the majors program. Once you're in, be prepared to go above and beyond, surrounding yourself with talented individuals that are all ready to push themselves to the next level. The more you get to hang out with other musicians, the more their influence kind of gets to you and the more you kind of influence them, and the more you all can get together for gigs, auditions, help each other out. 
anyone who's performing at the Perilla Performing Arts Center, that's when we get nationally known artists. They also interact with our students. A lot of times our students can go there and see the sound check. They can actually have a question and answer session with the major artists as well. But what if you just want to enjoy some music? Well, the department have you covered there too. We have a full year of programming of concerts. So almost every single month, there's a live performance here at the college, and it's free and open to all students. Well, what are you waiting for? From learning how to play piano, to auditioning with your violin, or even just watching people play something they love, the music department has something for everyone. For MC In Focus, my name is Manuel Hubbard. Montgomery College Public Schools, Montgomery County Public Schools, take first place in college preparedness nationwide. According to Bethesda Magazine, MCPS students earn more recognition for college readiness and careers in science or technology. MCPS has the most students who take AP classes in the U.S., which count as college credits when they finish high school. Wheaton High School in Montgomery County is in second with the most student achievements in project-based learning just behind Stevenson High School in Illinois. College Board awarded more than 3,000 students nationwide for their accomplishments during the 2016 and 2017 academic year. The College Board website states, students who earn the achievement have demonstrated success in both academic and applied coursework. AP and PLTW program offer career opportunities for high school students. University of Maryland's alumni Anique Singel opens a business center in Rockville. The Learn Center offers a 26,000 square foot space for entrepreneurs. Singel says first and foremost they need to figure out what exactly they're solving. Learn provides discussions, workspace, audio, video streaming studios, and education. For relaxation and networking, they have nap rooms, arcades, and ping pong. Business Week named single top three U.S. <laughs> entrepreneurs under 25. Montgomery College's radio station, WMCR, is hosting an end-of-the-year celebration from 2 to 4 p.m. in the Technical Center on Rockville campus. MCTV is recording the Black Panther radio recap event. The hosts and guests will discuss why it's one of the top 10 grossing films of all time. After the recap show, pizza and snacks will be served, so come on out and celebrate with your local college radio station, WMCR, this afternoon from 2 to 4 p.m. or tune in at www.eradiowmcr.com. Also, one of the most anticipated movies of the year premieres today. Infinity War is opening in the U.S. after it was released internationally first earlier this week. It's the 19th film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe released in the past 10 years. The film will feature many superheroes such as the Avengers, Spider-Man, Black Panther, and the Guardians of the Galaxy. Infinity War is projected to break many box office records such as biggest opening day and the biggest worldwide debut weekend. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of MC in Focus. I've been your host, Mark Sullivan. And I'm Molly Chang, and thanks, Peter Thompson, for your awesome sports update. Yeah, thanks.